Hey, if you're thinking about removing your own popcorn ceiling texture, that's great. I'm here to help you with that. But before you even think about it, before you jump into it, you first need to decide if you even can remove it. And I'm gonna explain what I mean right after this. Hey, welcome back to my channel here at That Kilted Guy DIY Home Improvement Videos. And I'm a 35 year drywall professional and I'm here to pass on my knowledge to you guys so that you guys can do your own home improvement projects so you can take pride in your workmanship, save yourself some money, and if you like doing those things, be sure and click on that subscribe button. And if you click on the bell icon, you'll get notified each time we put out a video. Now I've been self-employed. I own my own business of Mr. Patch Drywall. I've done this for about 15 years as my self-employed business and about 20 years before that. And today what I'm gonna talk about is the popular subject of removing your own popcorn ceiling. Now, it's a really popular thing to do because most people hate it. But before you even consider doing that, I'm going to go over some things you need to think about so that you don't get in too deep before you realize it's a mistake. Of course, the number one concern should be, does it have asbestos in it? You've probably heard that. Well, up until about 1979, roughly, they allowed manufacturers to put asbestos in the popcorn ceiling texture which is actually called an aggregated ceiling texture or acoustical ceiling texture and then when they banned it they allowed people to use up their existing inventory so you still could have asbestos in your ceiling texture even if it's a 1980 house maybe 81 after that you're probably pretty safe but if you really want to be sure you can get it tested yourself I'm going to put a link to everything I talk about in this video including and asbestos test kit. You buy this kit, you send it off, you just have to take a little small sample and it'll come back and tell you. Now it only runs about $50 to do this, so it's not much money for peace of mind and it may prevent you from getting in over your head. There are ways to take care of the ceiling if it has asbestos in it safely, but you wanna make sure you understand that first. So once you've determined if it's safe or not, the next thing is you've got to decide what way can you get rid of it? Because there's actually multiple ways. You can dry scrape it off, you can wet scrape it off, you can sand it off, and you can skim coat over it. You can put a layer, a new layer of sheetrock right over the top of it. And of course the extreme example would be rip out your whole ceiling, which I have never done. I don't recommend it. There's easier ways to do it. Even if it has asbestos, you don't have to hire an asbestos abatement crew if you do it right. So if the first thing I would look at is scraping it because that's the easiest way. It's messy, but if you do like we have here, mask off all the walls, mask off all the floors, then it's not that extremely difficult. Do one room at a time and it won't be all that bad. But you got to know if it will even scrape. So here's my first test. When I walk into a job, first thing I do is I'm six foot two. I can reach an eight foot ceiling. So I reach up here and I just run my hand across it. And if I do this a little bit and I see and feel much of the popcorn falling down, then I know it's probably going to scrape. Now I put a piece of black plastic here on the floor just to show you that little bit of scraping that I did just with the back of my fingers knocked some off. This job, it's a 70s house. I don't know if it's ever been painted. It's either not been painted or it's maybe been primed at the most. And if you get that much off when you do it, it's gonna scrape pretty easy. So that would solve it right there. But if you run your fingers across there and it's pretty abrasive and it kind of chews on your fingers and scratches, that usually indicates it's been painted. So now what you wanna look at is how much has it been painted because you still can remove it by scraping it if it's been painted. Now the sanding method, you can only do that if it's never been painted or maybe just primed. Once it's been painted, you can't sand it off. So now we're looking at scraping. Here's what you look at to decide if it might can scrape off. 
if you ran your fingers across there and nothing came off i can pretty much guarantee you probably can't scrape it so there's some other options that you can do to get rid of it at that point but if you want to find out if it might scrape because occasionally they do if they primed the ceiling and then they sprayed this on a lot of times it'll still come off so the only real way to know is to do a test spot now it's funny that i mention that because on this very job i went to the back bedroom and started scraping and this is what was underneath the popcorn so you never know what's underneath until you test it this is actually a swirl texture that has been painted this house was actually full of surprises because I had to do a repair on a water damaged section of the ceiling and when I cut it open I discovered someone else had already done an overlay of sheetrock over the old popcorn and better yet there was glitter in the popcorn if you see glitter in your popcorn it's never been painted so what I would do is find an inconspicuous out of the way area unless you know for sure you're going to get rid of it one way or the other then find that little area and do a spot maybe a foot square one foot by one foot start off with dry scraping see how it feels does it come off easily is it a lot of work does it feel like you're going to do some damage scraping it if you're dry scraping it and really digging into the sheetrock and it's really fighting you it's it's hard in that small of an area I would recommend not dry scraping the next step up would be to wet scrape it that's where we soak it with anywhere from two to five coats of water sometime we have to let it sit for 15 minutes to an hour hour and a half that's the secret if it's been painted you still can get it off a lot of times by soaking it longer and use hot water and put some soap in it like some crud cutter it's a product I use because it softens paint I use it to clean up paint where I get it some overspray or something it'll clean it up four or five days later so you do that you soak it and you just keep that spot wet for up to an hour you just keep coming back putting a little more on putting a little more on then try and keep trying to scrape it now and then if you finally reach a point where it starts scraping pretty clean you can probably wet scrape it if after an hour you still can't wet scrape it I'd give up on that method now see if you did that and you found out you can't dry scrape it you didn't go to all this trouble of masking and all this and then get up here and then you're kind of committed and you just go to town on it and chew the heck out of the sheetrock and you'll end up doing so much damage I think you weaken it and it's just not a good idea so another clue on how much it's been painted is also you can kind of tell sometime by looking the more rounded all the texture is the more paint that's on it okay let's compare some pictures here in this picture you can see this is popcorn that hasn't been painted a whole lot and you can see the popcorn kind of pops out it's got a lot of detail to it whereas in this picture you see the popcorn itself is kind of muddied and softened and this isn't good indication that it's been painted quite a bit now let's compare them side by side so now on a top picture lightly or not painted so it really pops on the detail the bottom one has that muddy look so it's probably been heavily painted and if it's glossy the glossier it is the less likely the water will penetrate it flat paint it'll often go through multiple layers of paint but if it's glossy you may have to just give up right there okay now I'm going to show you how to test scrape it and I'm using a six inch knife I wouldn't go much wider than that for your test I normally scrape wet because I can use a 10 inch knife and I'm going to put out a whole video on how I go through this whole process step by step all the way from masking to the paint texture everything if you want to see that look for that video as a separate video but what we're going to do is just take and just do a light scrape if you're having to push real hard it's a bad sign so now right there enough of it came off I know this will scrape it's probably going to take wet scraping but it will scrape because that came off pretty easy if you scrape a little more you might actually get the base off all I really knocked off was the bumpy part the cottage cheese part if you scrape a little more and you can get through that it 
right here where I did this, it just turned pure white. So that means I either hit a joint where it's coated like a butt joint or a recess joint, or they primed it. So I'm gonna move over a little bit, scrape over here and see what happens. Let's try right here. There. Now I went all the way to raw drywall. I'll take a picture of that and show you because you'll see the difference between here, I hit drywall mud that was the original finish coat and here I hit the raw drywall. So this is gonna come off nice and easy. I could probably dry scrape this whole thing. Now, if you can't scrape it and you can't sand it, are you out of options? No, but it might be beyond your scope because the next step up, what I normally do is I skim coat it. Now I have a whole separate video out on that. That's where I take fairly thick mud and spread it on by hand with a pan and knife and I coat the whole thing 100% thick enough to hide it. And that's a lot of work and often it'll take two coats. You got to sand in between. So for a novice, that might be beyond your skills. If you're a handyman or a up and coming drywall finisher, you can probably tackle that. The next option would be to put a whole new layer of sheetrock right over the top. Now, what I do is I put half inch. I hear a lot of people say, just put quarter inch and the thinking is lighter and all. And I agree, lightweight is good. And the big thing is when you put an overlay on here, because of the foam balls on here, the screws you put in, they tend to want to bury too far and they pop. And the quarter inch is so weak, you lose all your strength when you do that. So I prefer to go with a half inch. It's stronger. Quarter inch is just so brittle. The only thing I use quarter inch on is a wall. Like if I'm putting it over paneling or something. So go at least three eighths or half inch. If you have somebody do it, here's what I recommend. Don't tape this angle, have them hang it tight. If you hang the sheetrock tight along this edge, you can just caulk it. You've already sealed this up with taping on the previous layer. So now you can just caulk it. Now you didn't mess up your walls. You don't have to retexture and repaint your walls. But it is a lot of work you have to go through and find each individual truss because you can't just see them like normal so it's a lot slower than hanging new sheetrock but i have done that a dozen or so times so hey i hope that helped you out there's some more videos popping up here about popcorn ceiling and such i hope those will help you out too just click on them if you want to go check those out and if you guys have any questions post it in the comments down below i look forward to hearing from you I thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you on the next video. Take care.